Hi book lovers! Welcome back to my channel. So Valentine's Day is coming up real soon, which means romance is in the air, and for me that means more romance books. So I thought I would do a little recommendations list for some rom-coms, romantic comedies that you can read for Valentine's Day. I have six of them on my list, and if you are in the mood for something that's hilarious and adorable, lots of great banter, these books will be perfect. They're all just feel-good reads for a feel-good day. So my first recommendation is one that I actually just finished reading. It recently released and that is The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. This one is an enemies to lovers rom-com wedding centered if you couldn't tell from this cover. It is enemies to lovers. Um, the main characters do not have the greatest of histories just because the heroine was is engaged to the hero's brother and on the wedding day Max our hero somehow got his brother to cancel the wedding and now three years later Max and Lena are back in each other's lives reluctantly. Max is trying to prove to his mother he's working in the marketing department and he wants to show her that he has what it takes to work individually and not always with his big brother and Lena who is a wedding planner she gets the job or opportunity of a lifetime to work with Max's client, this hotel owner um, who is trying to hire a wedding planner to work for the hotel and Lena wants it. The two of them, Max and Lena, have to work together to create this presentation to get um, the hotel to hire Lena. Like I said, these two do not get along, but for the sake of the job, they work together and there's a ton of great banter. I love the chemistry between Max and Lena. What starts to change the relationship is when they have to travel to this farm out in the country and the car breaks down, so they're forced to stay in the inn overnight and share one bed. These two are just adorable and so funny. Lena, um, we get a lot of her Brazilian culture in this book, and Max is kind of a dork, not very suave, but that's why you love him and that's why he's so endearing. He's a little bit tormented over falling for Lena because obviously she was engaged to his brother and Lena's family are all so funny. They're super involved in her and her life. They definitely add a lot of humor and lightheartedness to this story, especially her cousin Natalia. I love the banter in this one. Banter for me is kind of what makes or breaks a rom-com for me and Mia Sosa did a really great job in this one. Next I have Ache for You by JT Geisinger. This is book three in the Slow Burn series but can totally be read as a standalone. This one is a modern retelling of Cinderella. The heroine is a seamstress following in her father's footsteps. Um, she has to go to Florence um, to see her dying father and it's at the airport that she meets the hero Matteo, an Italian hunk of a man. They they don't get off to that great of a start. He's an ass, she acts like an ice queen, but there is some serious chemistry going on. And once she gets to Florence, she gets to see her father one last time before he dies. And she also gets to meet her evil stepmother, um, who turns out is the mother of Matteo. So Matteo is her stepbrother. The two go head to head when Matteo wants to buy Kimber's father's business, but Kimber wants to keep it and take it over. They get into so many silly arguments. It's so funny, a little bit over the top, but I loved it. I was like laughing and smiling throughout this read. It's definitely a very different feel from the first two books in the series, which are more serious and a little bit angsty and this one is just straight up rom-com. It is one of my favorites from the few books that I've read from this author. Highly highly recommend it for some ridiculous over-the-top kind of humor. For a sports related rom-com I've got Intercepted by Alexa Martin. Although the entire playbook series they're all rom-coms but I just went with this one, the first book in the series. This series is all about NFL players and their wives and girlfriends. This one Marley, she 
has been dating a professional football player for about a decade and has just found out that he's been cheating on her. And of course, this is the time where a fling from her past, Gavin, comes back into her life as the new quarterback. Marley is a fabulous heroine. I love her. She's sassy and feisty, hilarious, and kind of has an obsession with hashtags. But she's just a really great narrator, really funny. And Gavin is the absolute sweetest. He treats her like a queen. Um, during their fling, he kind of wanted more, but Marley kind of was the one that got away from him. The heroines in this series are honestly what makes the series shine for me and why I enjoy it so much. It's a really great rom-com and if you love sports, this book and the series is perfect. This next one is a Friends to Lovers rom-com. It is So Good by Nicola Rendell. If this cover doesn't already make you want to read it, I don't know what will. Maybe the fact that the hero saves a drowning chihuahua and names her Cupcake. This one is such an adorable rom-com. I mean, hello, puppy in the book, come on. Max and Rosie have been best friends since forever, but the one time that Max accidentally sees Rosie naked, everything changes for them. They realize that there is a little bit more than just friendship between them. It's just so sweet and cute and adorable. So funny, especially all the shenanigans that Cupcake the Chihuahua and the heroine's cat Julia Caesar get up to. It's a total feel-good, light-hearted rom-com totally perfect for Valentine's Day. And then my next book is by R.S. Gray. I mean, can you have a rom-com list without this author? Probably not. She's a very well-known rom-com indie author, and there are a ton of books of hers to choose from, but I'm just gonna go with Arrogant Devil. This one takes place on a ranch, and the heroine has had nothing to do with ranches her whole life. She's lived a very cushy life um, and decides to leave it, and we're work for the hero at his ranch as his new housekeeper. Obviously being quite the pampered girl, Meredith gets herself into some sticky situations at the ranch when dealing with, you know, livestock and other things. Jack is pretty judgmental towards Meredith from the beginning just because he thinks that she's not cut out for this job, but thanks to a scheming grandmother and lots of forced proximity on this ranch, the two get to know each other more, and they kind of have a bit of a slow burn romance, which I loved reading. I love this book. This is definitely one of my favorites from R.S. Gray. Jack and Meredith just push each other's buttons so, so well and because they're forced to be together all the freaking time there's a lot of great banter and you can never really tell when they either want to kill each other or kiss each other and last on this rom-com list is one of my favorites from last year it is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert in this one we've got a geeky heroine who has a chronic illness and kind of wants to break out of the bubble that she has always lived all her life she enlists the help of Red who is her new superintendent of her new apartment. Red is a total soft boy, such a sweet hero, who Chloe has kind of been spying on a bit just because she, from her window, she has a direct line into his window where he likes to paint. These two are absolutely adorable and hilarious together. I mean, there's a scene where Chloe kind of climbs up this tree to save her neighbor's cat and gets stuck there. And Red comes along, of course, and witnesses this little humiliation. I love the humor in this one. It is so very British. Chloe and her sisters are a total riot, especially when they're all together. The book is so wholesome. The romance is so sweet, but we also get like a lot of meaningful moments within the book as well. It's just a very well-rounded, very diverse kind of rom-com, and I am so excited for more of this series about Chloe's two other sisters from Talia Hibbert. So that is my list for rom-coms that will be perfect for Valentine's Day or any day really. But I love making lists that like kind of have to deal with special events, holidays, things like that. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know some of your favorite rom-coms. I'm sure The Hating Game will be on a lot of your guys' list. I mean, it's on mine too. It's one of my favorites, but I kind of wanted to show some love to some lesser known rom-coms. My copy of The Hating Game is 
is right here as well as Sally Thorne's other book. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll leave a link to all the books that I mentioned in the description below. I'll see you all next time. Bye!